Hi guys, I'm Murphy's mom, and this is Murphy. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, and thank you for watching. If you're new here, I do around the house videos. Basically, I have clutter, so I'm always decluttering. I do cleaning videos, recipes, reviews, the occasional DIY. I'm not good at those, but I do do them, and so much more. First of all, I'd like to say, Happy 2021. We made it. It's been a tough year for a lot of people and I'm just so glad 2020 is done and we're moving on to 2021. Hopefully it'll be a better year for all of us. Now, usually at the end of every month, I do a monthly check-in and see how I'm doing. I'm really not doing that today because at the end of December, what I did was I looked back at the entire year to see how I was doing. And when I realized there were parts during the year I was struggling, I was getting overwhelmed with everyone being home and all of that. I realized there were a couple strategies that helped me get through the year without giving up on my home. Because honestly, there were times I could have said, go ahead, fill it with all your stuff. I don't care. I don't want to do this anymore. But I didn't. And I figured out these strategies were actually working for me. So I figured I'd share them with you. My first strategy is to set up routines. These are key. My routines are what save me every time I start to flounder and not know what I'm doing. I have decluttered my house many, many times over the years. I mean, I've done this a lot. If you're my age and you're still trying to get your house in order, you've done it a lot too, because you're like me, you constantly be doing it right. But I found routines make all the difference. I have three sets of routines. I have a morning routine, a weekly routine, and an evening routine. Are you almost done? You can go if you want. You don't have to stay. <laughs> my morning routine is basically the same every morning. I make my bed. I feed Murphy in midnight. Midnight, I don't know where he is. I clean out midnight's litter box. Then I make breakfast. Now, when it was just me home during the day, I would have a simple breakfast and be done. But now everyone's home, so that's taking a little longer. But once everyone was done with breakfast, I then clean the sinks. I know a lot of people do it at night and they it's easier for them, but I like my sinks clean in the morning so they're clean all day. So I clean my sinks, wipe down my counters, and I'm done in the kitchen. But then I swiffer my entire house because she tends to leave a lot of stuff behind. As you can see, I brushed her and then she rolled in, I don't know what, I think those are leaves. And she just leaves a trail of dirt behind her. I mean, she has paws the size of my hand and right? Yeah, and they just leave a lot of dirt in the house. So I swift her every day. That's my morning routine. After I'm done with my morning, morning, after I'm done with my morning routine, I do my weekly routines, which are Monday, I vacuum the entire house. Tuesday, I do laundry and I clean the kitchen. And I wrap up any trash because Tuesday night is trash night. Wednesday, I do anything outside that I plan to do. I don't do too much. Wednesday, I kind of take as like an easy day. Thursday, I dust the entire house. And I then will do a project because that dusting is really fast. And the reason I dust the entire house and vacuum the entire house one day a week is because I can't be bothered to get my vacuum out more than once and my dusting swiffer duster thing out more than once because too much work. <laughs> and then on Fridays, I always do my bathrooms and I do my sheets. So I wash my sheets, do the bathrooms, and then I'm done. I try to hit on these tasks every week. Now, some weeks I do have to, <sighs> some weeks, for example, last week it was Christmas. Well, Christmas was on a Friday. I was not cleaning my bathrooms on a Friday because I don't want to clean my bathrooms up during Christmas. So I just gave them a quick wipe down on Thursday and let it go for the week because I have been on top of my cleaning routine. I didn't have to worry about it being so bad that if I skipped that week, I was done. It, it worked out okay. So that's my weekly strategy. That's my weekly one. And then at night time, it's a very easy one. After dinner, I wash all my dishes, wipe down the counters again. And then I just go around at night and I pick up anything that has to be picked up, put the mail where it's supposed to be, things like that. Just simple things. I try to pick up any clutter, put it away, things like that. So that's my routines. 
they are what saved me this year. My second strategy for keeping the house somewhat under control is to have my household binder. It is a simple binder. I don't have any artwork on it because <laughs> I'm not good. Maybe I'll print out something and put it in here, but right now it's just plain, but that's okay. Because what's in here is what counts. I have in here my calendars. This is from August. But as you can see, I check off what I've accomplished. I write down the projects I want to do. And it gives me a guide of where I need to go. And I can see what I have accomplished, which is really important because maintaining your house, sometimes you don't realize how much you've accomplished until you look back on what you've done. I also keep in here my monthly check-in. And that's where I look back and see how I'm doing. Let me tell you, last year, I wasn't doing well in the summer because I was still trying to get settled and it took me a while. And then also I keep a list, I started a list of small projects that need to be done and bigger projects. So at least when I'm looking to do something, I have it here so I can find something to do. Sometimes you have some time, but you don't know what to do because there's so much to do. You don't realize I can focus on one drawer and that's what I put in here. So that's what is helpful it, it, it's a great guide what <laughs> my third strategy for keeping my house somewhat under control is to check in now there are two types of check-ins i do i do my monthly check-in i'm always talking about them i can put links to older ones where i go back at the end of each month and i see how well i did did i accomplish the goals i set for the month how did I do? Where did I need to improve? And then I set goals for the next month. And that to me is key because I'm keeping myself going. It's the momentum I'm using. My other check-in that I do though, and I didn't do it much in December and I realized I felt a little off because I didn't do it, is I didn't check in with my binder, in my binder or my calendar every day. And I should do that. Sometimes I can't. And December is one of those months that tends to get away from me. Like my mail in December, don't even go there. I was really good for a while. Then over the summer, I was terrible. Caught back up. I was doing so well. And in December, I fell apart. And part of it was I wasn't checking in on my calendar and checking off what I've done. Because when I do that, I'm like, oh, I got to do it. If I, I, I will see it and I will do it. If I don't, it's out of my mind. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> My fourth strategy for keeping the house clutter free-ish is to set realistic goals. And the key is realistic goals. I never, ever, ever put on my calendar or never try to do this. I never tried to paint a room in December because December to me is getting ready for the holidays. And if I try to paint a room or something like that, unless it's an emergency, I don't want to do it because I'm setting myself up for failure and that just is so discouraging. I really don't want to do that. So I don't do things like that. I set realistic tasks like in December this month, I didn't set any decluttering tasks because I knew I wouldn't get them done. So I, my extra projects were wrapping gifts, getting gifts, it was decorating the house, cleaning up the decorations, things like that. It wasn't oh, let's clean out something else that I'm never going to get done. I'm going to cause a mess and I'm just not going to be happy. So realistic goals are always important. And if you have them, they keep you going. My fifth and final strategy for keeping my house clutter free-ish is a mantra that I use when I'm not, when things aren't always going well in my life. But I've been using it for my house and I think it helps. And if you're like me, you always focus in on the negative stuff and not necessarily the positive stuff. So you can get down and not want to continue. So my mantra that I use when things really start getting tough is I can only do what I can do. I don't try to do things that I don't have the time, energy or willpower to do. I will get things done and I just keep going and do what I can do. I remember in February, I was sick. I didn't have whatever everyone else is having. I don't thank God for that, but I had a bad virus and I was sick for a couple of weeks and I would get up and I would kind of get my daily routines done. I tried, I just tried to get them done. I 
but I didn't finish half of them. And then I would take a nap on the couch because that's all I had the energy to do. But that's okay. Because when I felt better, I started to get things done again. But I was able to keep going because I realized I could only do what I can do in the moment. I could not do that. I could not do what I, would, I do normally because I was just not feeling well. And sometimes when your life is not always going the way you want it, doing what you can do is all you can do. And you try the best you can. All I can say is these five strategies have helped me get through this year. It's been an up and down year, but I think every year has its ups and downs. This just was a little bit more intense than normal years. And these strategies helped me get through this year. Maybe they'll help you. So if you, if any of these work for you, let me know. I'd like to know in the comments below if they do help you. If you have any strategies that work for you, put them in the comments. I would like to know because I'm always looking for something to make my life a little easier. I don't know about you, but um, yeah, I just, I it, hopefully these help you because I think they made a difference between my giving up. Because I can tell you, looking back at this year, May. April, May, June, there was a good possibility I was going to say, forget it. Just the house, let the house go, let everything go. And the reason I'm glad I didn't is I find when I have less stuff around, I'm less stressed. And this year was stressful enough that not having the stuff around was so helpful. If you liked today's video, hit the like button. If you'd like more videos like this, hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Murphy's mom, and this is Murphy. She's my 160 pound little fur child. Love her to bits. <laughs> right, girl? No? Okay. All right, I'll let you sleep. Yeah, she had a couple snacks while we were doing this. <laughs> Bye.